Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Chu, Zhu Ming, or Zhao Ming. So I was born in Hong Kong and my family decided to immigrate to Canada um, when I was about five years old to Vancouver and I grew up in a place called Richmond. From the age of eight years old, my mother put me in ballet class. Um, I was also doing gymnastics at the time and there came a time where I had to pick between the two because they're both equally very disciplined um, environments that require you to commit full time at a certain point. But I picked dance and I fell in love with it over the years and I am still dancing. I am now a professional dancer. Um, I am also starting out as an actor um, and I also like to write on my own time. So I moved to London about three years ago and I'm still here and I work here as a freelance dance artist. Um, I've worked with people like Wayne McGregor, Akram Khan, um, I recently worked with Stephen Hoggett um, and I've also performed at the Tate Britain. So my grandfather was Gum Yong, and he was my mother's father. Um, and some of my earliest memories of him was when I was still in Hong Kong when I was very young. Um, and we, me, my brother and our cousins would always go up to his house. Um, he had a parrot and he had turtles, like big giant ones. Um, and yeah, it was always such a lovely time there. Obviously, when my family moved to Canada, um, we saw him less. Um, we would still go and visit every Christmas. Um, he was a very kind and generous man. Very quiet, um, but he was also kind of jolly. You could just tell that there was so much behind this brain of his. But one of my favorite memories of him was when we went back for Christmas, maybe maybe like 10 years ago now. Um, and he, he was starting to lose his mobility already. So he wasn't able to walk or stand very well by himself. He needed assistance. Um, and I remember he, him saying, you know, oh, Jasmine, are you still dancing? Um, and he said, you know, I used to do ballet when I was young. Um, and he proceeded to get up and obviously all of the people assisting him were kind of freaking out, but you know, he insisted, he got up and he wanted to show me his first position and second position of ballet, um, you know, standing there with his little feet turned out like this and he had his arms like this and he's like, see, I remember these positions. Um, and it was just so cute because you know, he just, you could just see he was still so young at heart, even um, when he was getting at quite an elderly state, um, but he still had so much joy. And I just, I loved that I had that connection with him. He understood that part of what I did. So when he passed away, it was really sad. Um, I remember thinking, you know, just quite regretful that I never could get to know him as well as I would have liked to. And that day was really quite a day. <laughs> um, it was the 30th of October, um, 2018. I believe it was a Tuesday. Um, and I woke up and I got a phone call um, and it was my parents telling me that he had just passed away. Um, and you know, when someone passes away, it's, it's just, it's quite shocking and you're trying to comprehend it. Um, and that day I remember thinking, you know what, I'm going to spend this day kind of honoring him. And to do that, I'm going to go to ballet class. So I went to take a ballet class at about three o'clock and I thought about him the whole time and I was dancing for him. Um, you know, I just imagined that every movement that I was doing was devoted to him, his work and his life and everything that he means um, to me and to the world. And it was a celebration. Um, it was really a celebration of him. And then when I came out of that class, 
I got a missed call on my phone. I saw that I got an email from a casting director in New York about this show that I had put myself forward for. And at the time, I didn't really know what the show was about. Um, I knew that they wanted dancers who could sing and act, um, but they were also interested in people who could do martial arts, um, which was not me. <laughs> I had no experience in martial arts. Um, but they called me and they had been trying to cast this role um, of Little Phoenix and they hadn't found anyone yet at that point and they came across my material and um, they wanted to fly me to New York the following week. Although before that they wanted me to send them a video of me um, singing a little bit as well as speaking some lines out of the script. I was still obviously very distraught by my grandfather's passing. Um, at the same time, on the complete other extreme of the end, it was like, okay, wow, they want to fly me to New York and this could be something really big. And then I remember that night I was going to go see a friend in a show and I got onto my bicycle. Um, it was dark and about 30 seconds into my ride, I came to an intersection and I got hit by a car. <laughs> And I flew off and I remember thinking, what is going on today? What, you know, why is today so eventful in so many different extremes? It was just a lot of messages. Um, and I like to think that they came from my grandfather. You know, there's the, um, the very sad occasion of someone in your family passing away um, and the ending of somebody's life. But at the same time, out of endings come beginnings. And um, at that time, I felt like the car crash was then, you know, Jasmine, get off your ass. You, um, you could die any moment, but you're not dead. So be grateful, work hard and go get that job. Um, it was a wake up call in so many ways. And so instead of going to the hospital, I went home <laughs> and I um, cried a bit. Um, I had this big gash in my leg from the accident and I filmed my scenes. I sang a song, I sent it off. And in the next morning they said, okay. So I went to New York and um, when I got there, that's when I started to learn what the role was that I was actually reading for. So long story short, they gave me the job and I remember the director pulling me aside saying, okay, you're gonna have to work really hard these next six months. <laughs> so although I had the kind of quick um, ability to pick up choreography, being a dancer and of movement, um, martial arts was still a very different discipline, especially because with martial arts, it's kind of more practical. It's about really attacking somebody or you're really defending yourself. Um, everything has a very clear purpose. Um, and not that dance doesn't, but of course it can become more abstract. So for the next few months, it was quite an adventure. Um, my only goal was to learn martial arts. Um, and I was again dedicating this to my grandfather. It was a very strange coincidence that I, you know, I was given this opportunity to connect to his work. So precisely the thing that I regretted, which was that I didn't feel as connected as I had wanted to, to my grandfather. Um, this gave me the opportunity to do so. And when I finally got to New York for the opening of the show last summer, um, we had seven shows a week. I remember I spent a lot of this time actually watching The Dragon Saber and The Heavenly Sword. The reason I wanted to watch this series in particular was because this is where my Chinese name, Zhao Ming, came from. She was the princess in the story. Um, she started with a bad reputation, um, but what I loved about her character is that she was so strong, a bit cunning, um, but she was fierce and just something so powerful about her and the power that she had over everybody. At the same time, she was still very human at the end of the day um, and she had vulnerabilities. And I think that's what I really love about his characters. Um, they often have such strength and courage and um, such a passionate 
fight for something, but they're still people at the end of the day. They're just like you and I, um, so they're relatable. Um, but it also makes you imagine what you can be and what people can become. It allows you to dream bigger. And so I really used this inspiration as motivation for my shows every night. Um, I would try to be a bit cunning like her, um, very courageous on stage and, you know, really own up to that name. And to do this show every night was very empowering. I mean, I literally had a sword in my hand, so um, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. At the end of every show, um, me and my twin brother on stage, we would fly into the air to celebrate in this very beautiful, uplifting energy until you can see us anymore in the sky. And I remember every night that was the moment where I thought about my grandfather specifically um, thinking, you know, I know that you're there and this one's for you. And I just, I hope to continue to do work that will make him proud. Um, and ever since this show, it has really sparked my um, interest in learning more about my family and where I came from. Um, I started to learn Mandarin. Still pretty bad, but I'm starting. <laughs> Um, and I really want to become an advocate for um, East Asian voices in the Western world, and it starts by sharing stories like these. I hope you enjoyed this, and um, I'm looking forward to corresponding with you if you decide to reach out, um, and I will keep you posted about what's going on. Go check out my website, um, follow me on social media. Um, and I'm here. I'm excited for the future, and thank you so much for listening.